Good morning, senior three from all over Egypt. Welcome to today's session. Today we are continue. Uh, we are going to continue unit six, part two vocabulary. We have uh, with us today uh, Miss um, uh, Amani Shauki Said Badawi, Garbia Governorate, Miss Samar Yahya, Alexandria Governorate, and me, Miss Wafa Hassoub, Suha Governorate. So let's start, dear students. Let's get it done. Let's get it done. OK, of course, we are going to continue great expectations, vocabulary and definitions. OK, so we have first plenty, plenty add a noun. OK, it means much or a lot of or many. OK, to have enough or more than enough of something like we have the example here. We have got plenty of time before we need to leave for the airport. So what about post? Post as a verb means speak proudly. You know, to speak proudly, yatabaha, okay? So post means to brag, to brag about something. As we have the example here, parents enjoy posting about their children's achievements, okay? We have also form. OK, form, add a verb or add a noun. It means to make something begin to exist or shape. OK, this is as a verb. It means you shakil, OK, to form something. This is as a verb uh, to compose, to shape something. OK, what about a noun? Form as a noun. It means shape, shakil, OK, uh, or a format of something. Also, also form had another meaning. It means application or a sample of something. OK, an application in uh, music or a form of questions like we are uh, having you today uh, a form for you at a question. OK, let's see the examples here. A crowd formed around the accident. OK, they formed a circle around the accident to watch it. OK. Uh, another example, the moon highlighted the shadow uh, forms of the hills. Uh, we have here uh, two uh, words, OK, that's related to a human's body. OK, we have rest and we have sleeves, sleeves. It's connected to human's body. OK, let's see rest for uh, at the beginning. Rest as a noun, it's the part between the hand and the arm. OK, the part between your hand and the arm and muscle. As the example here, I sprained my wrist playing squash, playing squash. OK, we have sleeve, sleeve as a noun, a part of clothes that covers some of or all the arm. No sleeves, at mem. OK, we have the example. You'd better roll your sleeves up or you will get them dirty. Ms. Summer? Yes. Yes, continue, please, dear. Yeah, let's continue. Here you have got the word scar. Actually, a scar is a noun. A scar is a mark left after an injury or after a burn or after, after something. So it's, a, it's actually a mark uh, on a part of your body, your face, your hand. Or actually, it could be also a sign of a destruction in a place. For example, that burn will leave a nasty, a nasty scar. You know, that burn, you know, that burn caused by fire will leave a nasty scar. The word nasty actually means terrible or unpleasant. Let's see example number two. Every village bears the scars of war. You know, after war, there are some signs of destruction or damage. These signs we call scars. So a scar can be used for, uh, for a place or for a part of your body. Let's go to the word remarkable. When something is remarkable, actually, it is unusual or it is special because that's why it is very easily noticeable. For example, Meeting you here in Rome is a remarkable coincidence. You know, a coincidence actually is a, a chance. It's very remarkable, means it is not usual to see you here in, uh, in Rome. Uh, let's continue the word 
take turns. Of course, you understand the word turn. To turn actually as a verb means to, move, to make a movement. But here the word turn is a noun. To take turn means to do the same thing one after another. Like when you say, for example, now who is going to answer this question? It's my turn, you know? We take turns to answer the phone. Everyone answers the phone once. Let's go to the verb encourage. Actually, to encourage, to make someone like to do something, you know. You give him good words, you give him prizes, you will, you will make him eager to do something. We were encouraged to learn foreign languages at school. That means, for example, the school gave us rewards or gave us activities, things like that, to make us enthusiastic ha ah, here comes the word enthusiastic actually the word enthusiastic as an adjective means feeling energetic and interested in something you know when you are enthusiastic you are you have a great energy to do something you are very interested you don't seem very enthusiastic about the party shall we cancel it shall we cancel it because we don't see that you are interested yes mrs wafa will you start number one Okay, uh, uh, as usual, do it with us. Uh, so we want you, dear student, to participate and examine yourself. Number one, it's your space to do the washing up. So it's your impression, turn, productivity or performance to do the washing up. It's between you and your sister. It's your or it's your, you know, these fights. So, okay, it's your turn it's your turn to do the washing up of course okay yes continue please yeah let's go to number two after arresting the rubber you know what's to arrest after yeah here are our great student anan good morning anan how are you doing Hello, anan. Doing welcome yes. we welcome missed you back. We missed you very much sure i hope she does number two with us after arresting the rubber Cuffs were put on his. Usually they put cuffs where, dear students? On the wrists, on the sleeves, or the ankles, or the elbows. What do you think? Where do the police put the handcuffs? Handcuffs, remember? They are called handcuffs. Okay, I think when, once they are called handcuffs, so they are going to be put on your wrists, on the wrists, on the criminal's wrists. Number? A. The correct answer is number A. Okay, number three. Nobody proposed to marry her. You know what's to propose? To ask someone to marry. Nobody proposed to marry her due to, do you remember our dear students this expression? Due to, because of, um, now, due to what? Due to request on her face, rest on her face, sleeve on her face or the scar on her face what do you think yes hanan you said turn very good now try to do number three very good hanan rests number two what about number three yeah um, i don't want to give the answer no number three is not yet done mrs scar very good i just want waited for hanan to give the correct answer she said she misses two okay this is Sorry. let's continue Okay, just wait. Okay, let's continue. Let's go to uh, more different definitions. We have already done this part. Yeah, let's go to this expression. Keep away from. What's to keep away from something? When you keep away from something, not to approach someone or something. You keep away from a person, not to approach a person. You keep away from something, not to approach something. For example, when we say, keep away from the edge of the cliff. It's better to not to come close to the edge of the cliff because you may fall. Let's go to this word relief. What's a relief, dear students? Actually, a relief is a feeling of happiness. You know this feeling? Ah, alhamdulillah, this is actually a relief, a feeling of happiness. It was such a relief to hear that Martha was found safe and well. Maybe we were worried about Martha. Now she's safe, so we felt a relief. Hold on to. Actually, sometimes we say hold on to separate words 
and sometimes it is written hold on to actually just one word keep something you have you know when you hold on to something you keep it because you don't want to lose it hold on to your ticket you will need it later if you lose the ticket you may be in trouble so hold on to it number uh, the next one is cough cough watch the pronunciation cough actually cough is a verb to force air out of your lungs through your throat <coughs> this is to cough the smoke made me cough do you remember the verb make our dear students if you use other verbs after make in the sentence actually it is going to be infinitive don't forget that let's go to the last word drop to drop actually to allow something to fall she dropped her keys actually it happens to all of us we always drop our keys so to drop to allow something to fall okay let's continue Okay, dear students, we are continuing to have the definitions. We have act, uh, affectionate. Affectionate, it's an adjective. It means showing feelings of love, okay? Uh, it equals um, kind, tender, or compassionate, loving. All these are equal to affectionate. As we have the example here, he is an affectionate little boy, okay? Uh, also, affectionate means uh, fluffy or thin. Okay, tender. Um, we have um, affectionately, it's an adverb. Like we have the example here, she smiled affectionately at her fiance. Okay, let's see the word hunt. Hunt, it's a verb, means to cause repeated suffering. Okay, also hunt means to chase to chase uh, someone or uh, chase his uh, thoughts, okay? It's psychologically or physically. To actually hunt you means to actually uh, chase you in the streets or uh, in, in a place, okay? And like we have the meaning or the, the thing that we have here to cause repeated suffering. When you keep thinking about bad things that come uh, all the time to your head. We have the example here. 30 years after the fire, he is still haunted by images of destruction, okay? And um, usually um, the soldiers, uh, when they get out of a war, okay, they are always, always haunted by the images of the victims and they kill people, uh, their friends around them, okay? We have shiny, shiny, okay? It's an adjective, means bright because it reflects light, okay? It also means glossy, brightening, sparkling, uh, glamouring. This also means shiny. Like we have the example here, he was wearing shiny black shoes, okay? Shiny black shoes. So let's go to the last word, and I hope all of us don't get this word, okay? Because it's meaning life sentence life sentence is a punishment of being put in prison until death okay you don't go out of prison at all the convict was serving life sentence for murder okay go ahead dear go ahead miss Samar. my sister gave me a very long and hug you know a hug from a sister so what kind of a hug is your sister going to give you impressed affectionate anxious or live and don't forget the word live here is an adjective it is not a verb what do you think our dear students i'm waiting for the answer i think your sister will give you a very long and affectionate love okay very compassionate number b okay after the exam, I felt an incredible sense of, you know, after you finish your exams and find yourself answered all the questions, inshallah, of English, okay? So you feel what? You feel what? Rest, hurry, relief, or cough. So, inshallah, after you uh, answer all the questions of uh, English test, what would you feel? Actually, of course. That's the correct answer for number two, relief. Fighting in wars is an experience that would 
you forever enjoy of course not care disappoint or haunt very good Anan and Fredo it is haunt that's right very good yeah here comes the part you enjoy most antonyms and synonyms actually uh, of course you have got the word real here and the opposite of real is unreal or fake you know when something is fake it is unreal okay encourage we said the verb encourage to make someone want to do something actually the opposite is discourage okay friendly of course you are familiar with this word the opposite is unfriendly and of course you know the word wrong wrong actually the opposite is right it's like true and false and let's go to the word revenge you know what's to revenge or to take your revenge on someone you've already taken this before you want to punish someone who caused you harm what is the opposite of revenge actually to forgive to forget about the harm grumpy you have already taken this word many many times the opposite of grumpy actually is cheerful because the grumpy person is the angry one or the worried one tough you know the word tough tough means very hard difficult to deal with and the opposite is kind let's go to the second part here comfortable actually you know the word comfortable very well and the opposite is uncomfortable then goes the word get on actually get on here is related to transportation when you get on a bus for example get on a train the opposite is get off when you leave the bus or the train and you have got the word plenty plenty here means much or a lot as miss wafa explained the opposite is little and don't forget our dear students the opposite of plenty is little because plenty is used with uncountable nouns okay and the word far of course you understand the word far and the opposite is far is near or close and don't forget the word close here is an adjective so you pronounce it with the sa sound sa sa close okay let's go to the word trust when you trust someone you will never expect that this one will do you any harm and the opposite is mistrust yes include okay actually the word include means contain and the opposite is exclude when you know for example when you exclude someone from the group you prevent him from sharing for example i was excluded so i am not going to share expand actually the word expand as you know it is not new it means to increase in size but actually the word uh, expand uh, i'm sorry the opposite here is not explained this is the meaning the opposite is shrink you know what's to shrink to become very close inside maybe you are going to correct this and uh, we're going to share it to you inshallah in the comfort in the uh, in the link thank you very much and we'll continue with mrs wafa our dear students are turning up good morning everyone okay let's continue with the synonyms now okay so uh, think about every word and a sentence for it okay we have here behave it means to act well okay uh, don't do messy things so my students are behaving well okay anxious anxious means worry okay he is worried about something so he's anxious about his exams terrible had the synonym of bad or unpleasant this is a terrible accident i saw okay what about glad glad you know glad so feel happy or pleasant about someone or something okay i'm glad to be with you today okay we have sure sure are you sure about your opinion it means certain okay so what about tutor you know tutor he is a, a private teacher okay at home who teaches you at home not at school so he is a teacher but but at home okay he's tutoring you at home so let's go to chaos chaos okay it's an an um, unorganized group of people that they, they are doing things um in confusion so chaos chaos means confusion and before in the revolution of 25 okay uh, there were um, much uh, there was much chaos uh, in the streets as you all know so what about life sentence oh it's a punishment 
by by the government or by the judge it means life imprisonment uh, imprisonment means to stay all his lifetime in prison plenty plenty means much of something okay much of something so what about convict a convict he is a criminal who did something bad and went to the prison of course okay receive you know when you receive gifts okay or receive things from uh, anyone it means to get it from him to get something from someone okay oh fan fan of course we know the word fan it's not the um, the machine that gives you air in summer no we have here another meaning it's the admirer when you um, admire someone so deep okay like muhammad salah for example okay we are fans of him fans so you know fan fan is an admirer of a, a celebrity okay uh, behavior behavior to behave okay to act something okay so here to conduct okay so what about commuter uh, this is uh, someone who travels um, in transports okay uh, like traveler tra traveler so uh, it's commuter commuter he is a traveler in any transport in a train airplane whatever something like that okay let's continue the language units actually in this uh, in this unit uh, are very remarkable actually uh, let's go to the word plenty. As we mentioned, the word plenty, so we wanted to show you the difference between plenty of, a lot of, much, and many. Actually, plenty of is followed by uncountable nouns. Of course, you know, plenty of means a lot of, or as we explained before, or much. So it is followed by uncountable nouns. You say, for example, this car cost me plenty of money. You know, the word money is uncountable. What about a lot of? Actually, a lot of is followed by both countable and uncountable nouns. You can say there were a lot of people. So the word people is countable. Or you can say she wastes a lot of time on shopping. Time is uncountable, okay? What about much and many? And what is the difference between much and a lot of, for example, or plenty? Much is followed by uncountable nouns, but take care, dear students, it is likely to be used in negative statements. It's better, and if you have two options, either to use a lot of or much, and you see the sentence is negative, so please use much. I don't earn much money. As you can see, the, neg the sentence is negative, so it's better to say much. Is it wrong to say a lot of? No, it is not wrong, but it's better to use the much. Many, the same. Many is followed by countable nouns. Again, it is likely to be used in negative statements. For example, there weren't many cars on the road. Again, you can use a lot of, but it's better to use many once the sentence is negative. Okay, so what about among and between? Okay, they both mean uh, in between uh, something or, or, or in between people, but what is the difference between both of them? Okay, let's see together. Among or amongst, among or amongst. They both, okay, we use them in the middle of other things, with plural things, many things, okay. So I'm talking about one thing, okay, amongst other things. So this is with other things, a lot of things we have, or a lot of people. As we have the example, I saw a few familiar faces, okay, among the crowd, the crowd. So it's a group of people. That's why we used among here. Okay, let's mark it so you can see it. Okay, so what about between? Between, we use it among only two, two things or two people. We use between, okay? Like we have the example here, you have to choose between a holiday or a dishwasher. A holiday or a dishwasher. This is if a husband, okay, uh, is talking to his wife. So you have to choose a gift. 
either a holiday. OK, you have to choose between both of them, a holiday or a dishwasher. Of course, I'm sure that she will use a dishwasher because she wants it. OK, let's see about make good use of something. Make a good use of something means to benefit from it. OK, to get benefits from this thing. To be a winner, you must make good use of your time. You have to use your time in a perfect things, OK, in a good way. So let's see here enthusiasm and enthusiast and we can add also enthusiastic. So what is the difference between the three words here? We have enthusiasm and enthusiast. They are both noun and they have the same meaning, OK? Uh, to have the fiction about something or, or, or about a person. So what is the difference between both of them? Enthusiasm and enthusiasm. Let's see it together. Enthusiasm, OK, it's a feeling. It's a feeling, OK, of energetic, um, uh, especially energetic um, uh, internal uh, feeling that you have, uh, particularly about a subject or an activity. So it's a feeling, a feeling of energy about a person or an activity. Like we have uh, an example, um, I can say I don't have any enthusiasm for the whole project. OK, so I don't feel enthusiasm. I, I'm not feeling um, energetic about this. So what about enthusiast? OK, it's for person to describe humans, to describe a person. It means, OK, uh, that someone is passionate. Someone is passionate, OK, about something. Usually a hobby. If you have a hobby and you feel enthusiastic about it, you can say enthusiast, OK, enthusiast. So uh, when we are describing a feeling that we are having, we say enthusiasm. When we describing um, a, a passion we have about a hobby or um, something like that, we say enthusiast, enthusiast, OK? Um, we can say an example for you. She is, OK, um, a football enthusiast, you know, football enthusiast, OK? She has a crush about it. Like we have the example here, after the accident, he lost his enthusiasm, OK? For so his feeling of enthusiasm for the sport. She's a model aircraft enthusiast, OK? So I'm describing her now. So I think now we have the questions and I've already um, our students actually are very enthusiastic about the questions Perfect. and I'm, I keep encouraging them to answer. Now it's a very good actually to use the words you have already studied. Let's start with number one. Now I lost. I lost what? I lost sentence. I lost enthusiasm, I lost request, or I lost life about the project when they switched teachers. You know, the word switch here means that change. So when they changed the teachers, what happened to me? I lost what? Very good, very good. Anonymous, it is number B, enthusiasm, very good. And dear Fredo gave the same answer, enthusiasm. Very good, perfect, dear students. Perfect, Anna and Anna Fredo. So, very good. We want the rest of you, okay? Um, I know yeah. that I uh, already explained enthusiasm and enthusiast, so I forgot about uh, enthusiastic. It's an adjective, okay? It means excited yeah, about something. Perfect, perfect. OK, OK, so let's continue to number two. She has worked as an estate agent. OK, space other things. So is it between other things among other things also or aside? So other things. So what's the correct Actually, answer? Anand has given the correct answer. Perfect, Anand. What about you, Fredo? Where are you? I think he lost connection, but he is going to, to join us, inshallah. So she said number B among. Of course, of course. Well done. Well done, dear. Antonius also gave the correct answer among. And Antonius. Fredo, Fredo is here. What names among. we are having today? OK. OK, go ahead, please. 
Number three, yeah, don't take your brother's, don't take your brother's juice. There is in the fridge. Don't take your brother's because there is plenty, little, long or shiny. Very good, Anan. Plenty. Antonio's the same. And Fredo, very, very good, dear students. The correct answer is number A, plenty. You don't have to take your brother's because we still have plenty. We have much in the French. Yeah, so let's go to this expression, dear students, at the request of someone. Of course, you know the word request. It is not new to you. Uh, the clause was added to the contract at Claire's request. When someone wants to add something, actually, so you do this thing for his request, okay, or at his or at her request. So when I say the clause was added, the clause here means the sentence was added to the contract at Claire's request means she asked for the clause to be added, so we added her at her request, okay. Let's go to the word arrive. Actually, sometimes you are confused between either to use arrive in or arrive at let's uh, let's make it clear for you we use arrive in when we have countries cities or towns so arrive in is followed with countries cities or towns like when we say for example we arrived in paris later that day paris is a city that's why we use in with other places we use at say for example she uh, it was dark by the time we arrived at the station the station is not a country it's not a city or it is not uh, a town what about get to or reach actually get to is used with all places and reach as you know dear students it is not used with a proposition it is used alone for example uh, it's not very clear in front of me because we have a sign here we want get to or we want reach Miami till five o'clock, either to say get to or reach Miami. But if you are going to use arrive, what are you going to say? Arrive in or arrive at? What do you think? Miami actually is a city, so usually we will go to, to use arrive in. Okay, I hope this part was clear. Uh, allow me to add something, Mr. Summer, please. Sure. Okay, um, as Ms. Summer already explained to you, dear students, that arrive in for countries, cities, and towns, arrive at for buildings or part of buildings. You know, if you are talking about house or um, any any other building, station, clubs, whatever. So buildings we use arrive at. So take care, take so much care about these words I'm going to tell you. The word home. We can say arrive in home or arrive at home. We don't use prepositions at all. I arrived home. I arrived home. Also today, I arrived today. I arrived yesterday. Um, early, I arrived early. I arrived late. So with these words, home, today, yesterday, etc. of course, early and late, we don't, don't use prepositions. We use arrive, okay, plus the word arrive home, arrive late, arrive early, with no prepositions at all. Okay, thanks, Ms. Summer. Okay, let's continue, dear students, with solution. Solution, it's a noun, okay, and it's an answer to a problem, or uh, of course, it's a liquid, okay, it has another meaning as a liquid. So uh, let's have this. Um, uh, example here when you finish doing the crossword the solution will turn up okay the solution will appear for you copper dissolves in solution okay so what about depression depression of course to be depressed means to feel unhappy okay um, to feel a hole inside your uh, your your body or your soul and also had another meaning it means a hole itself so let's have this definition here or this example sleeping problems are classic symptoms you know symptoms are odd okay of depression depression okay so sleeping problems are classic symptoms of depression uh, 
there was a depression in the sand where he had been lying. Okay, so here uh, laying a force means to to stand horizontally or to to stay horizontally in a place and the sand. So while he was standing there or sitting there, he made a depression. He made a hole, you know, hole. Okay, it's um, it's something when you make like um, a hole, <laughs> of course. Okay, let's go to the word touch, touch. Uh, sorry, tough, tough. It's an adjective. Okay, it means difficult. It means firm. Okay, he is a tough person. OK, uh, or or also have the meaning of violent. Violent when you do something bad to other people, so he is tough in his dealing, in his performance. Let's see the example. They will be a tough team to beat. That means that they are hard, they are strong. OK, the toughest criminals are held in this prison. So toughest here means they are violent, they are dangerous. OK, and do it with us. OK, yes, Miss Summer, please. Now, actually, we have some newcomers. Hana is here with us and Jacqueline. Welcome back, everyone. So actually, hello, Jacqueline. A very warm and a very hot competition today. Sure. Uh, let's start number one. Please, our students be ready. The boss refused our refused what? The boss refused our sentence enthusiasm request or life to leave work early that means we wanted yes mustafa what needs explanation we are explaining mustafa we need to leave early but actually the boss refused our very good antonius number c request very good he refused our request he refused our demand to leave early very good and then request very good OK, number two, the deep space over the Atlantic will gradually move eastwards. So this is a wonderful scene you can see the deep, the deep what? The deep depression, reflection, chaos or solution. So which one, dear students? That's the correct answer. The deep depression over the Atlantic will gradually move eastwards. You know, a depression in Munchafad could be on land or on air. Don't forget that. Okay, the Munchafad Gawi say we also call it a depression. Very good, very good, Fredo. It was uh, correct. Let's continue with number three. What time will your train get reach? turn or arrive don't forget get reach arrive have the same meaning what do you think which one is going to be correct actually the correct one is very good Anan. it is arrive what time will your train arrive very good actually arrive antonius gave the same answer arrive very good fredo the same arrive can be used alone don't forget that very good our dear students very proud of you. OK, sorry, sorry to be late. OK. Ready? Yes, now we are having uh, productivity. It's an essay for you, dear students. Um, you know that unit six had a reflective essay and we uh, examined uh, or told you the meaning of a reflective essay before. So we are going to tell you just a hint about it. OK, and read this essay uh, as an example for you. So what is a reflect a re reflective essay? Can you remember? Can you give us hints in, uh, in the chat, please? OK, a reflective essay. It's uh, when you examine your own experience. OK, you are talking about your own experience uh, in an essay. Uh, so you are telling us about the things that you already had and write about those experience about um, how uh, how it affects you, how it changed your thoughts, uh, how it developed your ideas, develop your thoughts okay about life, uh, about everything that you are going or passing through. So a reflective essay, you are talking okay through your experience. you are talking about things through your experience. You're explaining it through your experience and how it affects your personality. So we brought you, Miss Summer already uh, made it for you, this wonderful essay. 
uh, so you can read it. OK, uh, this is the time for the quiz, Ms. Summer. Do we have time? Let's start uh, the second one together. Well done, Ali. Well done, Ali. Um, it's better this way now. Now, our dear students, it's clear now. Please be ready for the questions. Well done, Ali. Well done, Ali. Brainstorm hard work, carry on hard work, suppose hard work, or the last one is waste. I don't think this one is correct. It's carry on. Very good. Carry on here means to continue, dear students. Okay. Number three, he is a or an space member in charity. He exerts great efforts. Okay, he is doing great efforts. So he is lazy. Of course not. He is doing great efforts. Is he frustrated? Uh, is he an active member or a massive member? So it's pretty, pretty obvious for you. He is an active member, of course. Okay, he is working yeah, much. And C, I've already given you the correct answer, Mrs. Fat number C. Let's continue. Stress affects your affects your what? Your performance, your drawback, your priority, or your alternative at work. It reduces your productivity. You know what's to reduce dear students? To make something less. Okay, this is the opposite of increase. Actually, stress affects your what? Okay, it's number one. Number A, performance. Stress affects your performance. Number five, before starting a lesson, teachers should space ideas. So, carry on, waste, suppose, or brainstorm. You know, before we start or any teacher starts a lesson, dear student, he has to warm you up for the lesson, give you some ideas, exert ideas from you, take things, okay, that related to the lesson, and then start his lesson. So what we call this, this warm up for you, we call it brainstorming, of course. To brainstorm ideas means to collect ideas from you. To collect ideas from you as we are going to do inshallah tomorrow with grammar so be ready with us uh, okay so number five brainstorm let's get ready for number six dear students be ready i have no i have no difference no option no pedal no logic but to follow the rules but to follow the rules i have no choice i have no choice so i have no no what? What do you think? What is the word that gives you the same meaning of choice, dear students? The, the correct answer is option. I have no option. Very good. Number six, option. Okay. Never space your time or energy. So, don't use your energy and your time over things that's not working, that's not useful for you. So, I'm giving you an advice. Never, never what? Never carry on, never waste, or suppose, or option. So, never, of course, never waste your time. Don't lose your time or energy over bad things. Number eight, to blog, carry on, evaluate, or brainstorm is to judge how good, useful, or successful something is. What do you do actually when you tell that something is successful or good? To do what? Blog, carry on, evaluate or brainstorm and give you the correct answer, which is evaluate. To evaluate is to judge how good, useful, stressful or something successful something is. Uh, continue, please. I have some noise. Okay, let's continue with number nine. Dear students, I'm very eager to hear your answers always. To, very good, you're giving the correct answer, but a bit later. To is to think about or examine something carefully. To analyze, carry on, evaluate, or brainstorm. To, ah, to analyze, very good, dear students. To analyze, actually, to analyze. Again, number 10. Okay, number 10. Space is the thing that you think is most important and that needs attention. So, the things that needs attention from you, you have, okay, to do it first. 
and everything else comes after it. So what we call this? Is it a blog, priority, evidence or strategy? The things that comes first for you in your attention, okay, in your consideration, what we call it? Is it a blog? No, of course. Is it an evidence? No. So yes. good luck. Good luck for you. It's priority. Priority. Prior priority. Sure. Very good. So let's continue with number 11, dear students. It matters how you will put this plan into practice. The first one into practice. The second one away or away from. I think here the confusion is going to be between two answers. The first one and the second one. It matters how you will put this plan into practice written with C or into practice written with S. What do you think, dear students? It's here a matter of spelling. It's a matter of spelling. I think the correct answer is number A because the word practice with the C is a noun. Uh, let me uh, tell you something. You know, the American people write the word practice with with C for both verbs and nouns actually. So in all cases, whether it is British or American, we are going to choose the correct one, practice. Okay, dear students, we are running out of time now. So wait us tomorrow, inshallah, with the grammar of unit six. Uh, don't be late. We hope you enjoyed our meeting and um, benefits from all of us, uh, Ms. Samar and Mrs. Amani and me, Ms. Wafa. See you tomorrow, inshallah. Bye.